All right, good evening, everybody. I can give you the rundown on the current numbers. Um, I think what's important there is the trend lines we described yesterday are, are continuing. Um, hospitalizations up, but not spiking up. Uh, the infection rate is down a little bit. Um, 32 new hospitalizations, so you see the beginning of a bit of the surge there, but we still are managing that pretty well. I really wanted to come in this evening to talk about something else, because the president had a passing comment um, on his way to the helicopter, then he retweeted that he was considering a, quote, mandatory quarantine for New York City, New Jersey, and parts of Connecticut. And words matter. And uh, those words have created a certain amount of confusion. And when you lack clarity, that can create confusion, and confusion can lead to panic. So let me tell you what I know and what I don't know. Uh, and I've been in close contact with uh, New York, New Jersey, Rhode Island, so we try and read those tea leaves. I've had a um, brief conversation at the White House. And uh, basically, I think they were thinking out loud about re-looking at the hot spots, including New York area, including even Louisiana and Detroit, and figuring out what to do. And uh, they said, we're thinking about a wide array, everything from lockdown to the status quo. And I tried to point out that, remember, the status quo from Connecticut and my fellow governors in, Ro in Rhode Island, New Jersey, and New York, is uh, one, stay at home. And uh, that is a, um, a, a mandate that is uh, uh, increasingly being followed. It is two, if you cross state borders, get yourself, if you're not tested, get yourself uh, quarantined for at least 14 days. Something our other states are doing, something Gina's doing um, up in Rhode Island. Uh, I said, look, we're t uh, discouraging people from traveling uh, and making sure they stay as home as much as possible and I explained to the White House that uh, these words have effect. And uh, Metro North ridership is down by 95%. So if you're thinking about cutting off commerce, think about how much we've already accomplished there. I said, look, if you want us to you know, make the 14-day uh, quarantine for people crossing the state even um, stricter, let's talk about that together. But all of the governors, meaning um, you know, Murphy, Cuomo, and myself, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, really worried about even the prospect of what a lockdown would look like. Look, we're not Rhode Island. Um, you know, New York City, and with New Jersey and uh, Southern Connecticut, is the global capital of the world for commerce and for finance. And if you care as much as the president does about getting this economy going again, you've got to be very careful about what you say and what you don't say. You know, I'm struck by the fact that the population of uh, Manhattan doubles every day during work days. Give you an idea, not to mention hundreds of thousands of people going to Connecticut and New Jersey leaving Manhattan. So you have to be very careful about what you mean when you say a mandatory quarantine 
Uh, we had our brief conversation, and I um, reminded what happened in Wuhan province. And uh, in Wuhan, just the mention of that um, quarantine did lead to a mass exodus of people there. But I'm not saying there's not more that can be done, and I'm saying we're going to work collaboratively with the White House to get more done, and I'm certainly going to work very closely with my fellow governors, because I think when we work together as a region, uh, we work a lot better together. So I don't want to sit around, and I'm happy to take your questions, but I can't speculate on exactly what the president meant by um, a mandatory quarantine. But I can tell you that we're working together on this. We are the ones that have to enforce it, we the governors. Uh, there are, you know, hundreds and hundreds of roads leading in and out of the New York uh, metro region. It's something absolutely unenforceable if they are talking about um, slowing down or stopping traffic. So um, we're going to work with them collaboratively. I hope we have clarity from the White House before this night is over, so that uh, before um, the day comes, people know exactly what they can expect and how the White House and the governors and the mayors are all working together to keep you safe. You know, with that, I'm trying to answer a few of your questions, uh, but I am to be very careful not to speculate further. Uh, Brian Ditlake with Fox 61. Um, in regards to mentioning Rhode Island, um, we've seen cases where the National Guard has been door to door knocking on people's homes, trying to see if there are New York plates in their state. Uh, will we see that happen here at all? No, I don't anticipate that. Um, I, I talked to uh, Gina Raimondo, the governor there today. Look, there's one main highway that goes in there. They have some um, guardsmen there or state troopers. If you have New York plates, they do ask you to go over. And it's a friendly reminder. They tell you, we ask you, they tell you, self-quarantine for 14 days if you're coming into Rhode Island. Uh, we do that um, uh, in, a, in a less formal way right now, but I order people clearly we want you to self-quarantine if you're coming into the state of Connecticut. She had something interesting I'm thinking about, which is where if you're renting a place in Rhode Island for um, a short-term rental, they put in there, if you're from out of state, we uh, a writer that you should self-quarantine as well. So uh, we're going to be following a lot of the same social distancing rules and keeping an eye on out-of-staters coming in and out of the state, just like Florida and New York are thinking about out-of-staters coming in and out of their state. Who did you speak with at the White House? Uh, we had a high-level conversation at the White House. But it wasn't the president himself? It was no. not the president himself. And did they tell you that they're going to, you know, be taking uh, further action to mandatory quarantine? Uh, they told me that they uh, valued the input from the governors and um, that they uh, were now going to make a decision in terms of what they meant by a mandatory quarantine, and I urged them to do that now before thinking out loud again. They didn't offer any timeline for you? I hope this evening. This evening. Do you think the president has the legal authority to do it? I, I know that the White House is looking into whether or not they have the legal authority. Um, look, these are extraordinary times to take extraordinary measures, but we're also a, a nation of laws. And by the way, it's uh, Governor Cuomo and myself and Governor Murphy. We're the ones that have to enforce these laws. So you got to work with us in a collaborative way. And they reached out today, so that was a start. Governor Cuomo said earlier that doing that would be tantamount to a declaration of war on states. Do you agree with that? What did he say? He said that it would be uh, a declaration of war on states. He made that decision. I phrase things a little differently. Uh, that is, uh, look. They can propose, but we got to dispose. We're the ones that would have to enforce these rules, and let's work together to make sure that it's rules that work, don't upset the economy, and don't upset the populace, and yet let the, give them confidence that we're working together to do everything we can to stem the tide of this pandemic. I know we can't speculate, but what would enforcement look like here in the state? Because you just mentioned that we have plenty of roads going in and out of New York at this point in time. So what would enforcement even look like? Will we have the National Guard or just local police enforcing this? Let's see what they mean by uh, mandatory quarantine. But obviously, if it's uh, doing something on the roads, that's impossible to enforce, given the spider web of roads and traffic and uh, coming in from all different directions. Would the state try to fight it, including in the courts? I don't think we're going to have to be there. I think we're going to work through this. How many people died today? Do you have an, uh, an update on the number of deaths we've had? 
I think um, we have a total of 33, so I think that was six additional. And Five from Fairfield County. Are you considering, um, you, you've had, I think I've lost count now, 12 um, executive orders or, or 13 executive orders um, mandating certain things. Um, are you going to be taking any further action um, that you can take as, as governor to um, limit crowds, limit possibly services? Um, I think we are going to do more executive orders. I think my first step, Christine, is um, keep talking to the White House, see what they are proposing we think about on a regional basis, and then make sure whatever I do, I do in collaboration with my fellow governors and make sure it's actually enforceable and doesn't make the situation worse. You know, panic can make the situation worse. Lack of clarity can make the situation worse. Governor also said he thinks the policy of checking on New Yorkers in Rhode Island is unconstitutional. Do you agree with that? Seems a little aggressive to me. Yeah. Governor Chris Powell, the Inquirer. Um, hey, Chris. Uh, chloroquine uh, has been discussed as a possible therapy for the coronavirus. A few days ago, it was reported that Governor Cuomo had asked the president to have tens of thousands of chloroquine tablets sent to New York, and the president was said to have uh, agreed. Yesterday, in a front page story in the Connecticut Hearst papers, there was a feature about the Wilton guy who uh, got sick at a conference in San Francisco, came back, was deathly ill, was put into an induced uh, coma, uh, but has recovered and is now at home. In the body of the story, deep down, I think they buried the lead, uh, the Hearst papers reported that he was cured uh, by a combination of chloroquine and an antiviral drug called Calitar. Uh, there have been reports in Britain and other places that chloroquine in combination with an antibiotic Zithromax and zinc uh, has had very good effects. There was Chinese research about this on the internet three or four weeks ago. The question is first, um, do you know if Connecticut has any stocks of chloroquine, if it's, if it's being used in any, uh, in any therapies? Uh, second, uh, do the hospitals report to your office about what therapies are being used and what are successful and, and, and what are not? Um, and uh, I guess that's really about it. Thank you, Chris. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce the names of these uh, drugs, but what I can tell you is there's been some, um, some reporting, some short-term tests coming from France, coming from the example you brought about, that suggests they may have some impact on uh, mitigating the effects from the coronavirus. I do know that we've talked to hospitals around the state, and they do have a, a supply of these. Uh, we worry a little bit about the potential for hoarding of uh, uh, drugs and therapies like this because they're also there for, um, you know, malaria and a variety of lupus and other things that are very important. But what I don't want to do is tie the hands of our doctors either. I want to make sure they have the freedom to um, prescribe this where they think it could be effective. We know it's been out there in the marketplace for years now from a safety point of view. Now we're testing the effectiveness. One thing, Governor, that British press has reported that uh, the British government has recruited more than a half million volunteers, mostly lay people, but also the retired medical people you've appealed to, uh, to form a volunteer corps for the National Health Service over there. Um, is there uh, any contemplation of uh, trying to form a, a volunteer corps for our hospitals here in Connecticut? I think that's a great idea. We are trying to do that right now. Um, I've got a PSA out there. We've had a thousand nurses who have come back from uh, retirement. Uh, we're trying to get uh, folks in our um, nursing schools, get them accelerated faster. We're trying to get medical assistance, for example. Maybe they were in dental, maybe they're in some um, elective surgery facility. Get them retrained so they can uh, help out as we build our stock of people. And more broadly, we'll think about other volunteers who could be helpful as we prepare for the surge. Did you remind the White House when you spoke to them that um, they're obviously seeing this as a, as a hot spot where there are a bunch of cases um, that you have not received any ventilators from the national stockpile. I did bring that up, as a matter of fact, Christine. I said the only thing I like about the president's comment, the only thing, is that he's thinking about um, this is a, a, a zone, and that includes not 
a state border. That's New York City, that's parts of New Jersey, and that's parts of Fairfield County. And I did say, I want you to think about this zone, not just in terms of enforcement actions, but in terms of supply as well. Because I think that, uh, you know, Andrew Cuomo is never gonna be able to put out the fire in New York unless we can put out the fire in Fairfield County. And that includes ventilators, that includes PPE, and all the other material we need. We've gotta be in the front of the line, right alongside our other neighbors who are part of this uh, hot zone. Has there been any progress on that since yesterday? Not much. Okay. Little bit, I mean, the volunteers are coming forward. We're doing everything we can internally, and we are getting hundreds and hundreds of uh, pieces, but not on the scale that we need. We've heard a lot of people saying that they think that many people are not staying home, too many businesses are open. Do you agree, do you think that there needs to be tougher restrictions right now? Um, well, let's talk to my neighbors and let's talk to the uh, White House on that. If, if they think we have too broad a definition of essential services, maybe we should do something together. But I'll tell you, like I said, the rails are, de are, are empty. The roads are increasingly empty, and I think people are prioritizing essential services and stay home where they ever can. Speaking of essential service, uh, services, Governor, um, we were there as the National Guard received supplies in Shelton yesterday. Um, do you have an update on National Guard operations in the state? On the Guard operations in the state, you said? Correct. I can tell you they've been valuable for us, uh, helping us get the field hospitals going, helping us um, you know, get transport materials between different hospitals right now. I know that in some other states, they're there helping with heat sensors and patrolling uh, ingress and uh, to some of our major facilities. Uh, they've been invaluable. I wanna be treated like the other states, though, when it comes to having the feds pay for our uh, guard services. You know, again, right now, I think it's California, uh, Washington State, and, um, and New York State. You know, we are part of that hot zone. We should be treated the same way. Governor of South by some news aid piggybacking on these comments. We too have been getting reports from our viewers about a number of incidents where a large number of people are gathering ignoring the social the social distancing guidelines. What is your message to those people who are doing this? You're endangering yourself, you're endangering your neighbors, and you're endangering your family. Take this absolutely seriously. I've asked our police to um, Go in and, and break up those groups and tell them on a friendly basis, uh, you've got to st separate. We've got uh, volunteers going to our park system uh, this weekend, as long as it stays dry. Again, going to those groups of young people often that aren't taking this as seriously as they can and uh, separating them and say maintain the social distance. It's in your best interest, but it's in the community's absolute best interest. Do you see a tougher stance coming down the road if this continues? Yep. What would that look like? to be determined. In your conversation with the White House, did they give you any indication about a response to the request for the major disaster declaration that you sent a couple days ago? No, I, I can tell you we're moving on that pretty hard and our, um, our congressional team led by uh, Senators Murphy and Blumenthal are pushing that. I think we'll have some good news on that. I can't tell you when. Thank you, everybody.